This is it, the last piece to the puzzle. After creating a player object, some enemies, and a way for the player to interact with those enemies, that is, to shoot things at them, we've got a game. Almost. What's left is for our game to detect when a missile has hit an enemy and respond appropriately. For our purposes, a response will be a sound of an explosion and the death of both the missile and the enemy ship. In the 2D world, we had rectangles that were created by the dimensions of the images. In the 3D world, we don't have such a thing, but we do have spheres, 3D spheres that are wrapped around each mesh and have similar intersect and contains methods to the rectangle class. These spheres come to us courtesy of the content pipeline and are very useful in simple collision checking. They're not highly accurate, unless your model is a sphere, but they'll work for us. First, let's figure out exactly where we need to test for a collision between a missile and an enemy. A reasonable place is inside the update missiles method, so let's go there. Take a look at the nested if statement that checks if the missile has gone beyond the death zone. Right after that, we're in a good position to put in an else statement, because we're already inside an if statement, the one that checks whether the missile is alive. We know two things if we put an else. The missile we're checking is alive, and it's not out of bounds. That makes it a likely candidate to hit one of the enemy ships, so this is a good place to do our collision test. So. After the second if statement, put the following code, else test collision missile. Now we haven't written the test collision code yet, but we're going to. Let's put it below the update enemy ships method, so find it and go just past it. Add this code, void test collision, game object, missile. This method doesn't return anything, but it does take a game object, the missile we want to test. Add the following code inside this new method. Bounding sphere, missile sphere, equals missile.model, dot meshes, zero, dot bounding sphere. Bounding sphere is the type discussed earlier. It's a sphere that can test intersections and collisions. Inside each model, as you learned earlier in the tutorial, are one or more meshes. Each mesh, thanks to the content pipeline, is given one of these bounding spheres, large enough to cover all of the points that make up the mesh. Thankfully, all our models have just one mesh, so using these bounding spheres will be easy. For the missile, we get its mesh's bounding sphere, so we're ready to test it against another sphere, which we'll get from each enemy ship, one at a time, and test if the missile sphere is intersecting it. If so, it's a hit. The bounding sphere has two properties that are used to determine intersection, the center of the sphere and the radius of the sphere. Since the bounding sphere comes from the mesh, it is not positioned or scaled the same as the game object we're using it in. That's the first thing we need to change. Add the following missile sphere dot center equals missile dot position missile sphere dot radius multiplied by equals missile dot scale. This sets the sphere's center to the location of the missile object in the world and then scales the radius down by the scale of the missile object. This ensures the sphere is positioned correctly in the world and sized the same as the game object. Let's loop through the enemies and get their bounding spheres. Add the following code. For each game object ship in enemy ships. If ship dot alive. So we're looping through each enemy and only testing against the enemy's bounding sphere if they're alive. Inside the if conditional, add the following bounding sphere ship sphere equals ship dot model dot meshes zero dot bounding sphere. We get the bounding sphere for the enemy's mesh. Now that we have it, we must move the position and scale the radius just like we did for the missile. Add the following ship sphere dot center equals ship dot position. Shift sphere dot radius 
multiplied by equals ship.scale. Now, with a bounding sphere around the missile and a bounding sphere around the enemy ship, check if they intersect. Add the following. If ship sphere dot intersects missile sphere. The code inside this if conditional only runs if the two spheres intersect. To test that, we use the intersects method, which is part of the bounding sphere class. So, if the missile and the ship bounding spheres do intersect, then we have a collision. As discussed before, we want to make a sound and kill both the missile and the enemy ship. So add the following. Sound bank dot play Q, quote, explosion, quote, missile dot alive equals false, ship dot alive equals false. We'll play the explosion cue we created and set both the missile and the ship alive flag to false. That's it. Now we can shoot down ships. You short four right curly braces to close the intersect if, the alive if, the for each, and the method. So add four right curly braces. We're ready to test our game out in its final form. Build and run it. Click the right pointing green arrow or press F5. If you're on Xbox, make sure you're in the XNA Game Studio Connect at the Connect to Computer screen. Now try it out. Rotate the launcher, take aim, and fire at the approaching UFOs. If you score a hit, the UFO disappears with an explosion sound. You've put together the beginnings of a great game. You've learned about 3D graphics, input, collision, and sound. There's so much more to explore and build, you're just getting started. Where to go from here? You've got a wealth of resources at the XNA Creators Club online website at creators.xna.com. From samples to technical articles, right up to whole game starter kits, you've got everything you need to take your game to the next level. Build on to this game. Add your own goals, challenges, abilities. Make this game truly yours. When you're ready to submit your game to the community, you can sign up for a premium membership in the XNA Creators Club and submit your Xbox 360 game to Xbox Live Marketplace for others to download and play. Congratulations on completing these tutorials. From here, it's time to branch out and explore. You have the power to dream, build, and play anything with XNA Game Studio and the XNA Creators Club only at creators.xna.com.